it comes to product animation, a lot of these incredible shots seem so difficult, when in actuality, the workflow behind them is super simple once you understand how it's done. Just like your favorite magic trick, it's never what it seems. So to date, we're gonna break down three of the most complex shots from this actual TV app. We're gonna cover how to recreate them step-by-step, step, and by the end of this video, you'll have some amazing shots to slap on your portfolio. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later. So a bit of context here. We're gonna recreate three shots for this product. It's a 65% state-of-the-art mechanical keyboard and it doesn't work. Now, since the design of this product is patented, I can't give you the exact design for obvious reasons. So I've put together a blend file in the description with a dumbed down version so that you can follow along. Yeah, you like Wendy's. Yeah, I love Wendy's nut smack. Now, with your blend file open, let's start out with this heavy hitter. To the untrained eye, it looks like some form of liquid, but there's no liquid sims, no physics bakes, nothing. Instead, the workflow for this is actually super simple. First, grab a sphere and subdivide it. This sphere is going to act as a cookie cutter and slice out geometry from the keyboard using a Boolean. To do this, select the top side of the keyboard, add in the Boolean modifier, and select the sphere as the Boolean object. Now, straight away, you'll see nothing's happened. That's because we need to hide the object to see what's happening underneath. So with your Boolean object selected, press H, and now you can see this. You may have noticed right now your computer is screaming or about to explode, but if you do find it lagging quite a bit, you can come down and click this little monitor icon on the Boolean modifier to disable it in the viewport while we set everything up. So in this case, we don't want a singular circle shape as the Boolean. We want something that resembles liquid, and the easiest way to get that is with the displacement modifier. Add this to your sphere and click this little pill icon. This now takes us to the texture properties where we can create a new texture to displace our boolean with. I went with the clouds texture and at this stage it's just a matter of tweaking these parameters. You could have it more spiky or soft. I went with a middle ground here. So we have the beginnings of the effects here but now we need to animate not only the boolean but also the camera to track along with it. Now, this is going to be like a three to four second shot. And on the timeline here, I have auto keys on. That way, whatever we do on any given frame, Blender is going to add in a key automatically. So with the Boolean selected, I'll scale it so that it's fairly large and have it intersect here. Then I'll move forward on the timeline and push the Boolean to the end of the keyboard and scale it down until it disappears. Now, the key to getting that fluid effect is by adding in a subtle rotation to the Boolean. So on this last keyframe, I'll press R twice to get this gimbal rotation and just move it around to get a rotation keyframe inserted. Now it's time to polish this animation since right now it looks pretty bad. And this is entirely done in the graph editor. If you want to become a pro, this is the tool you need to master. So I'm going to show you some simple tricks in here to level up your animation. First, switch to the graph editor by pressing Control and Tab. Let's now select all our keys with A and press T. This opens up the interpolation menu and we want to make this Bezier. This makes the animation smoother as you can see with the curves here. But now let's use this super simple trick and scale the curves into an S shape. If we hit S and try to scale right now, it doesn't work. And that's because we need to change one setting. With this drop down here, we can change the pivot point of each keyframe and make it individual origins. This means instead of scaling from the average of all selections, it's going to scale from each selected keyframe's center point. And as you can see now, we can scale these curves into that S shape with basically no effort. From here, it's just a matter of tweaking the timing until you get the result you're looking for. But there's still one thing missing. The camera. Honestly, this is the same process, except this time you're literally just tracking the movement. So grab a camera and set two keyframes, one at the beginning of the animation and one at the end. Now in the graph editor, you want to match the curves and timing as best you can with the Boolean object. And once you're happy with that, it's just a matter of choosing a lighting setup, hitting that render button, and you've got yourself this. Now this is awesome, but it's 2023, and if you want a shot at landing a client, 
then you need to showcase your work with a great portfolio. And these days, it's so easy with services like Squarespace. This render and many others can easily be applied to your website using Squarespace's built-in auto image scaling. Not only that, but with their pre-made layouts, you don't need to worry about design. Squarespace has you covered with their award-winning templates. Maybe you want to show your portfolio on the go. Well, Squarespace has a great app that lets you manage and update this wherever you might be. Start your website with a free trial and when you're ready to launch, head over to squarespace.com forward slash smith to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. This is probably the most complex shot out of the three in terms of effort. So let me walk you through how to animate this exploded view. First, let's start by framing this up with our camera. I'll add in a camera and dial the settings in to something like this. Now from the final animation, you can see the layers and the hierarchy that we need to match. So I'll start by selecting all the keycaps and the logo. Let's add in a keyframe here on frame one. Then on frame 33, I'll move the keycaps up to about here and set another keyframe. Now the trick to getting that smooth wave-like effect is by offsetting the keyframes for each layer. So for every row of keycaps, we want to push the final keyframe back by two frames. The first row will stay on frame 33. However, the second row, I'll select them all and push the keyframe back two frames. Again, row three, select them all, and this time push them back four frames. Row four, six frames. And finally, row five, push this one back by eight frames. After all that hard work, you should have something like this. Yeah, it looks pretty bad, but we'll fix this up in the graph editor in a minute. For now, let's move on to the top plate. It's the exact same process. And honestly, you're gonna be doing this for each object. Just set a keyframe on frame one, then simply move them into position on the final frame 33. You can then offset the keyframe depending on what part it is. For example, the rubber feet. These are at the bottom of the frame, so they need to get there faster than everything else, meaning the end keyframe should be offset to something like frame 25. The brass weight is also at the bottom, so I'll offset this to something around frame 26. You get the idea. The only thing that needs to be done differently are the switches. For these, we want to do the exact same process as the keycaps. So row one will finish on frame 33, row two will offset by two frames, and so on. The last thing to do is animate the camera, and I mean, <laughs> you know what to do at this point. Just pull it back away from the keyboard on frame 33, that's all you gotta do. Alright, now it's time to juice this up with the graph editor. Again, we're going to use the exact same process as before and scale the keyframes. So select everything, hit T and change this to Bezier. Switch the pivot point to individual centers, hit S to scale and when you're ready, hit that render button and you've got yourself this. All right, let's finish this up now with shot three and we're gonna use a new technique that I think you're gonna love. This last shot is thankfully so much easier to achieve and ends up with an amazing result. This time we're going to be creating a bunch of copies of the keyboard using a collection instance. Essentially, we want to select all the pieces of the keyboard, duplicate this, press M, and move them to a new collection. We'll call this collection the Master Commander and move it off to the right. So we have our main keyboard in the center frame here. We want to dress this up with a bunch of instance keyboards surrounding it. Instances are so powerful because instead of duplicating the mesh multiple times and adding in hundreds of thousands of polygons to your scene, you instead create an exact replica of the original mesh without all the data and polygons to slow down Blender. You're basically cloning it and whatever the original mesh does, all of the instances will follow suit. So press Shift plus A, and we can come down to this collection instance. This opens up all your collections in the Outliner, and we want to select the Master Commander. Now, if the origin of this keyboard is not aligned to it, you're gonna get some wacky results. So simply right-click it and come down to Set Origin, Origin to Center of Mass. From here, it's just a matter of placing a bunch of the keyboards in the scene. 
The final step is adding in that subtle animation. Again, this is super easy. First, select the master committer's empty controller. And we just want to add a slight rotation. So I'll set a rotation keyframe at the start, move the timeline to the end, and place another rotation key like so. And as you can see, all the instance objects are rotating and it looks super cool. Next, I want to animate each instance object floating down at its own pace. So for this, I need to set a location keyframe for all the instance keyboards at the start and at the end. Then I'll move them all down on the Z axis for the final keyframe and alternate the distance traveled for each one so that it doesn't look rigid and unnatural. Lastly, we need to animate the main keyboard in the center. By now, you should know what to do. It's a simple rotation on the X axis, one at the start and one at the end. For this shot, since they're all in slow motion and there's no snappy movement, I didn't touch the graph editor, which means all that's left to do is add in some lights, set up that render output and hit that render button. So now we have some amazing product renders to add to our portfolio. But honestly, that's only half the battle when it comes to creating a sustainable income with 3D. And I actually have a secret bonus tip for you that's gonna help you skyrocket your income as a 3D artist. And to find out how to do that, you'll wanna watch this video right here.